the Cannons and Tomahawks podcast, presented by Belly Up Sports. All things hockey, all the time. And now, here are your hosts, two washed up beer leaguers who have no idea what they're talking about, Zach Martin and Alex Nuttle. What's going on, everyone? We are back. Episode 8 of the Cannons of Tomahawks podcast, presented by Belly Up Sports and sponsored by Pure Hockey and Spy Optic. As always, your hosts, I'm Alex, and we got my buddy Zach. Zach, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. You know, just enjoying tonight. A uh, little different doing it on a Friday, but hey, you know, why not talk some hockey? You know, my team's not playing. I don't know about the Jacks, because at this rate... No one really cares what you're doing right now, but I'm excited, man. This is this is gonna be a this is gonna be a fun show, and we got a special guest tonight. We got Chad Meyer of the Garage Beers Podcast, a fellow Belly Up Sports Podcast. Chad, how are you doing tonight, man? Thanks for coming and joining on the show with us, boys. First time, long time, or thanks for the vine, or is this what I'm <laughs> supposed to do? Like I've I've never wanted I've never done one of these before. This is pretty awesome, but thanks for having me on. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, for sure, man. No doubt. Yeah, it's. It should be a fun time. So, you know, having you on, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, but Alex, it's been an interesting week of hockey. You know, there's coaches getting fired, uh, insane goals from capitals and it's not, you know, you know, it's not Alex Ovechkin. So you, uh, ready to get into some uh, hockey talk. I know you might not be ready for a period three when we talk about, uh, Hawks jackets, but. Yeah, it still I, should be a fun time. I think I'm going to go ahead and call in sick for that section. Uh, I oh, got okay. a, me, me I and got a little tickle over. in my throat. So hey, 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 me and Shadow will just take over and you can just sit there by yourself and just cry into your beer or something or your cool Calypso, whatever else you're drinking, because why not, right? <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and get another Calypso Colada um, wine cooler. And then I'm going to go back and watch The Notebook. So it's fine. No worries, guys. Don't Aww. worry about it. I got to take care oh, of it. That's, that, that's, that's, that's adorable. Oh, it's, it's so cute. Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Again, a, a Calypso Colada, and you're going to go watch the notebook? God. Yeah. God, you're just, he's, you're dude, just, he's living the life, man. He's yeah. just living the life. You know, Absolutely. Hey, that's what happens when you get shut up by Malcolm Subban. Do nothing in a hockey game. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we had a good, good episode for this week. <laughs> oh man, dude, you're 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 not right. You're not ready for episode three. I can tell you that much right now. You're not going to be ready for this. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, let's act. All right, let's stop. Act. Let's actually talk about episode uh, about period one. So why don't you lead us off, Alex? <laughs> um, I'd say probably the biggest thing that's happened this over the past couple of days that I don't really think anybody saw coming was. Claude Julian just gets canned from the Canadians. Um, yeah, not, that was um, not that sure was, why. Just because they lost to the Senators twice, but yeah, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You would think you know, you know, they were beating up on Vancouver earlier this year that you know they might take some of their lickings, you know, and you know move on with it. But no, I mean, Tyler to Foley beat up on Vancouver. And the oh, Canadians were just know, there. That's right. Yeah, it was Tyler to Foley and a bunch of other bums. Yes. So you know what. So what was I thinking? I mean, shoot, false hope the Canadians actually do something and be a team that we all thought were going to possibly be well this year, but apparently not. They came back down to earth. Shocker and a half. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. The North, the North division is wild. It is a wild division. First off, like, Austin Matthews can just stop scoring for about six months. And I think he'll still be in the lead at this point. Absolutely ridiculous. This man, it's I didn't want Toronto to win this division, but right now it's looking like Toronto might win this division. Yeah. And I'm not here for this. I'm not happy about it at all. I, I'm hey, really not. You, you, but, already, you already know they're insufferable. Why do you want to make them any feel better about themselves? Well, still, you know, Toronto is Toronto. Their fans all suck horrendously. Um, but I but, still get a lot of pride in being able to knock the Leafs out of the qualifying round in their own house last year. It made me happy. So, you know what? I was okay with that. That was pretty fantastic. Or the fact that, 
even though they're good, they're a good regular season team, they'll still not win a Stanley Cup this year. So I'm actually not upset about that. So no. just waiting for the slow burn of them just fading out of existence for another Stanley Cup run. So yeah, no, I'm yeah. upset about that at all. No, for sure. It, Chad, how do you feel about that with uh, Claude Julian getting getting just shit canned this week? Yeah, it definitely came out of left field. I mean, they're, the, the Canadians actually started out the year pretty hot. And, you know, it, it it leads me to believe because they're still not bad. I mean, yeah, they had a couple of bad losses, but it leads me to believe that there was something internally going on, whether he might have lost that locker room or whether he might have. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether or he and management have had some sort of disagreement. But, you know, the Canadians still weren't playing that bad. But uh, it, it, I'd be interested to hear more details. But it's definitely a, a one of those out of left field, like, what the hell type of type of situations. But. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised, and uh, yeah, you're totally right about the Leafs. I mean, they're they're kind of the sharks of the East. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. people in San Jose are like, oh, rude, yeah. much? <laughs> yeah, great as, regular as, season as, team can't get over that hump. Yeah, right. As, as they're as they're drinking like their you know their green drinks and in their tofurkey, they're like, wow, that was just so rude. Like, why is it talking about our sharks like that? Gosh, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> hit some waves. Hit some. Let's just get some waves now, man. I'm depressed. That makes my yeah. organic slushy taste terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> to, all, to all the San Jose fans who might listen to this podcast, sorry, not sorry, <laughs> not sorry at all. I'm not even gonna say sorry. I'm not sorry. That's why I no, said sorry, yeah. not sorry. I'm a Columbus <laughs> fan. I'm allowed to say sorry, not sorry, but not say sorry at all. I can just say not sorry. Sorry. Eddie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry, yeah, no, I, I, I'm not a fan of any of those California teams. I mean, you, you got you got the Sharks, then you got a team that was spawned from a Disney movie. Like, you're not a real hockey team. Okay. It, yeah, yeah. It, those jerseys were nice, though. Let's be honest. I mean, those original My Ducks jerseys were pretty nice. The original, the yes. Whatever – disaster is, they threw on their jerseys now you can go back to disney pre disney just go to non-existence it's fine well, i mean hey we do have our jersey ranking episode coming out eventually so we'll we'll have some takes on the on the my ducks or no sorry not the my ducks the ducks yep. in their non-mightiness of their jerseys i wonder where you have the blackhawks hmm <laughs> Wow, we really got, we're gonna go there right now, Alex. I mean, we, we, hey, best logo in sports, best logo in sports, sir. Exactly, I'm just exactly. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'll, 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 hey, I try not to homer so much on this show, but that episode there might be a little bit, and I do have a reason why my team is where they are. So don't give me too much crap for it. Hey. 30 32 Blackhawks fans are gonna love where I, who I put in 30 seconds. So but you, you won't know until that episode drops. That's all I have to say. <laughs> ooh, ooh, little cliffhanger. I like it. Cool. You, you gotta want them, you gotta want them to have more, man. You, you gotta do it. But yeah, it's it's crazy to see Claude Julian. I'm curious to see who the Canadians are gonna pick. And then I wonder if Julian's gonna go get a different job somewhere else, maybe Vancouver, whenever they fire their coach. Or maybe he'll go down the Mike Babcock route and go on TV for about three months and then go coach college hockey somewhere in Canada. Curious as long as he doesn't come to Columbus, because I'm literally putting money on that Torts will not be there after the season is over. Now, whether that is him getting fired, going through the rest of the season, and just walking away, I still am putting money down that the only way, only way he will stay is if we somehow win the Stanley Cup this year. We'll see, we'll save that talk for period two because we got a couple extra things to go through on period one, but we'll get to your torts. We'll, we'll talk yeah. about you first since you know you like coming in second this week. So I, I just <laughs> puked in my beer at the thought of Mike Babcock coaching the Blue Jackets. Yikes, that would be horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about, you know, Earl, we you know mentioned in, in the run up to the show that there was a fantastic goal by Washington Capital and it was not Alex Ovechkin. Alex, did you see this goal from uh, TJ Oshie today? Uh, the last couple of days, I forget was it last night or something. Did you see this goal? I actually have not. Um, go ahead and let's get let's talk about it a little bit, and I will actually look it up right now. It was pretty fantastic. He's basically just going down on goal, and like he basically like he I don't know if he gets tripped or what it was, but he basically like he's almost sprawling. He's like diving forward, and at the last second, just pokes the puck with his stick and it goes in the five hole. 
and it just went in. It was, it, I wouldn't say it's, it's gr- as great as Alex Govechkin's was, but this was still, this is pretty, this is almost like the one B to amazing goals. Chad, have you seen this by chance? The TJ Ocean? I'm, look, I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> oh, so, man, this goal is a, absolutely stupid. It it's a good stupid. goal for sure. It will, it's not so going to touch Ovi's. No way, oh, because oh, Ovi is not. sliding away from the net and he's on his like, back over and his head. throws it. Yeah, he's but, like, he's like the stick over his head, like pokes it from behind his head. Like he's just, an, it's insane what Alex did. But yeah, TJ Oshies is still pretty awesome though for the fact that he's flying and just pokes it at the last yeah. second with a five hole goal. Like that thing was fantastic. Though. I mean, yeah. how can you not bring that up? Like that was just legit. Oh, that's definitely a good goal. I mean, you know, poking right in five hole, that, that still makes me think of uh, Texier's shootout goal from a couple weeks ago. Uh, that was, that was, doing that the was. just getting the little French fire poker right between his legs. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, hey, pretty man. much. Hey, wait, whatever, whatever works, man. I mean, hey, put it on goal, see what happens. Good things happen when you put it on net. Not you know talking about last night's first period, but like I said, we'll get to that later on. But <laughs> <laughs> put it on net, <laughs> stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and right after the windmill deep too, and losing his balance. Yeah, that's it's, it's a good goal, but yeah, that's definitely not going to touch Owens. No, I don't. Th- I don't think there's any goals that's going to touch Obi's unless you do something absolutely stupid and just you're like sliding from like goal to goal or like you're doing something absolutely insane. I don't think anyone's going to touch Obi's. I mean, the Michigan from Shvetsikov was nice, but nah. Try doing when you're on your back, sliding away from goal, and you're like over your head and you're poking it in like that. It's like yeah, no one's no one's touching that. Speaking of, right. Svech- I think Svechnikov tried it again last night. Oh, did he? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Build, build Michigan's miserably. been done before. The Michigan's been done before. <laughs> Oldies has not. Yeah, and of course, you know, Crosby tries to do it on his back and absolutely just fails at it. You're just like, no, nah. that, that's <laughs> I don't not think it. So. That's that's not it, Chief. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, e- even if Sid did do it, I still wouldn't give him the credit. <laughs> oh no, it's Pittsburgh. No one wants to give them credit. <laughs> yeah. So sorry to Megan, who a uh, part of Slapshot Sweet Hurts, who's a Penguins fan. Uh, sorry not that sorry. we're just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah, not sorry about that. So, or if you're a Leafs fan, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Not hey. sorry, eh? <laughs> I'm not sorry. Hey, you're not my buddy, guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's but yeah. O- Oshi, nice goal. Congratulations. Still not better than Ovechkin's, but still pretty nice. Not gonna. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. So have you seen the? Uh, just solid drama coming out of old Canada junior over in Buffalo. Oh, fantastic. Jeff Skinner is like, I still want to play for Buffalo, even though he's getting absolutely healthy scratch because he's probably one of the, one of the worst runs of a season he's been on in forever. And he's just like, I want to stay here. And Sabres are probably thinking to themselves. No, like brother, you're a $9 million healthy scratch. Get out of here. No way. And plus, why would you want to stay in Buffalo anyway? They stink. They got no. I'm sorry, like Olafson and all those guys. You know, Jack. I mean, Jack Eichel wants to leave for again. This is like what the second time in four seasons. Jack's like, I want to leave, and that's your captain. Your captain yeah. wants to leave. Yeah. yeah. This isn't like PLD leaving Columbus or name another guy who wants to leave their team, like you know Roslovic and Line. A. None of those guys were captains. Your actual captain wants to leave Buffalo. I'm sorry. That's sad. He was very good, by the way. Jack Eichel, in my opinion, has to be one of the most underrated players in the NHL. He's just on a really bad team. I mean, let's, you know, you got all these other really good players, you know, Clayton Keller in Arizona, you know, and you got, you know, a few guys on the Islanders that could probably prefer to play somewhere else. But yeah, Jack Eichel, though, he is it's a travesty how much his talent is being wasted on a team like Buffalo where they can get Eric Stahl and Taylor Hall and all these other guys. And they still can do absolutely nothing with that team to actually yeah. be good. They play good for like a month and then they just disappear. And now Jeff Skinner's is like, I want to stay. Why, why would you want to stay? And you have your captain who's like, no, nah, this this isn't working out. I need I need to leave. <laughs> well, the Buffalo needs to be the team that says, "Hey, we don't want you here anymore because one, you suck. 
Two, your salary cap is terrible. Three, you're just going to be a healthy scratch. So it's a you're costing us money as you sit on the bench doing nothing because these guys running league minimum are making you know better plays, getting more points and more production out of them. It's insane. Chad, what are your what are your thoughts on the whole like Jeff Skinner situation? Just you know, with Jack Eichel now is like once again saying, "I want out of Buffalo." You know, it's it's. Yeah, on one hand, I kind of feel bad for for Buffalo, you know, because it, it, they're very similar to a team like you know, like Edmonton. You know, every year they seem to make some sort of splash in free agency, some sort of splash signing, whether it's Jeff Skinner, who was great the year that they got him in, you know, oh, Eric yeah. Stahl, Eric Stahl, solid veteran, you know, to bring in solid depth guy to bring in. You, you thought you, with that roster, when you looked at those lines in Buffalo, you said, great. This is a team that can contend for the playoffs. They still don't have a goalie, but they can contend for the playoffs. And it, it's just, it just doesn't work out. And, and, you know, for as far as Jack Eichel goes, I mean, yeah, Jeff Skinner, yeah, goodbye. I mean, you're wasting $9 million. We signed you to this huge extension, and I don't know, you just all of a sudden forgot how to play hockey. But, yeah, you know, you feel bad for guys like Jack Eichel because you, you want him to move on because his potential, his talent is being wasted in Buffalo now because they're not winning. And Jack, a guy like Jack Eichel deserves to win. You know, and, and you know, I, I mentioned Edmonton, just like a guy, just like, Connor McDavid, his prime years are, at the end of his years are going to be are, are going to be wasted in Edmonton for the, the, the longest he hangs around. So let these guys go somewhere and contend. And yeah, I, I totally, I, I totally agree. Let let Jeff Skinner go, save the money, go spend it on someone else who's probably going to fail, fail you, <laughs> and, and fail Buffalo and fail this team. So yeah, I, I just. I don't know. I you, you can't you can't have a guy like Jeff Skinner who's very talented and has a potential for 30 goals. He's done it before, but if he's not giving you what you need, don't 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 spend don't keep spending the money on him. Don't keep don't keep paying this guy for for being a healthy scratch like you said Alex. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just a wild situation overall. It's like for whatever reason it's like that that team like you said, like Eric Stahl is such a good veteran. Like he knows how to play hockey. He played really well in Carolina. He played really well in Minnesota. And like wherever we're, I don't know if it's like something in Buffalo where it just like zaps your energy. You just, you just it's like almost like guys who go there, like their careers just go to die. And it's just crazy to think because you're thinking of like the Sabres teams where like, you know, where they were wearing the, like the red, black, and silver jerseys. You had Briere and, you know, they had Hashik and all those guys and Roy. Like they had a squad back in Buffalo in like the yeah. mid mid to late two thousands, and it's just like whatever reason now. Like ever since they went back to the blue and yellow, it has just not worked in Buffalo, and it's it's sad because all you really have in Buffalo is the Sabers and the Bills, and the mm-hmm. Bills are finally getting good, and now it's like the Sabers are kind of fall are still doing what they usually do, just falling short of expectations. And like you said, Chad, every year you see Buffalo making moves, and you're like, all right, Buffalo might be serious this year, and then all of a sudden just falls apart and oh you mean the, you mean the buffalo bison are are the <laughs> the triple a baseball team up there is 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 oh. isn't something they take seriously <laughs> yeah oh yeah i forgot i forgot, I forgot the bison's first <laughs> team former former indians affiliate the buffalo bison hey once you're once you're not affiliated to the indians anymore i really don't give that much <laughs> i don't really give that much for you but i mean hey have fun have fun with the blue jays i mean thanks for hosting <laughs> them for the last baseball season but yeah no that's yeah. That's I mean that's just rough though if you're if you're a Sabres fan like you at some point you gotta be like when is it gonna turn around because you know at least you see teams like Ottawa and Detroit trying to have somewhat of a plan to get th- get these things better and it seems whoever Buffalo does it just doesn't work and yeah. no no it doesn't and you feel if you feel bad for that city too because those fans up there they're just as crazy about the Sabres as they are about the Bills oh for I, sure. I mean. Even before, even before the red and black era, you had guys like Pat LaFontaine and Alexander Mogilny oh, in there. They, sure. they, they, yeah. they had a long, they had a long streak of of really, really good hockey in Buffalo. And for whatever reason, like you said, Zach was super, once they went back to the blue and yellow, they just have not been able to get it together. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Like they should never. They maybe they just need to go back to the old jerseys and just be like, all right, we're just gonna go back to the red and black. Bring the big buffalo head back and let's just let's try to recapture something because whatever what whatever reason it's just not working out right now. So yeah, yeah. I, I guess we'll I think Eichel. <clears throat> I think Eichel should almost do like what we had talked about with McDavid, 
at request, hey, don't protect me. Let the Kraken do what they want, figure out who they want. If they feel like they can take both of them, then fine. And then they can build a team around those two. If, I mean, if they were to take both of them, you know, I, I feel bad for Jack Eichel because he is, again, I think he is severely underrated. He's a very good player, but he is in a terrible team. Minus Taylor Hall, but Taylor Hall has been kind of eh, this year, as most people have, honestly. But um, I, I think it's almost like he he needs a change of scenery to get something going. But because when when he's playing, you can see the frustration in his play some games, and you can just tell it's there. With you know, he's not getting any younger. That's the thing. He's mm-hmm. he's eventually going to be out of his prime, and then you're going to have a new. Jack Eichel or new Connor McDavid or new Sidney Crosby come in and that person's going to overshadow him. So then he's just constantly going to be under the limelight all the time. So it almost needs to be a, Hey, I want a trade or don't protect me or, you know, I'm just going to walk in free agency. I don't know when his contract is up off the top of my head, but it's one of those things like, you know, if he wants out, I know there's options, but at the same time, I mean, I feel, I feel bad for the guy. I really do. Yeah, because they if if they just had a goalie. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, guys. <laughs> you're, good, you're good. No worries. No, uh, as, as I say, if if they just had a goalie, things might turn around. But they just have not that team. This that team can score goals with the best of them, but they just can't stop anybody because they haven't had a they haven't had a goaltender since Ryan Miller. Since Ryan Miller got out of there, they 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 just haven't been able to stop pucks from going into the net. And, you know, yeah. as simple as it may sound, and. You know, if, yeah, if, I mean, if I'm Michael, I I'm, I'm finally saying, look, get me out of here. You know, I mean, there's, there's these signings. Buffalo has been doing a good job because on paper, these splash moves that they make are, are good moves. Like if you're Jack Eichel and you see that, oh, wow, we're signing Taylor Hall. Hell yeah. I'm staying. I don't want to leave Buffalo anymore, but (laughs) now that it hasn't worked out, I think it's finally time for him to just say, you know what, get me out of here. You yeah. have to, you know, those the thing is either the, like the philosophy or wherever or wherever the culture is around that team because, like, you're talking about, you know, you're talking about McDavid and all that. I mean, he just hit a five, he had like what 500 points and he was like one of the youngest guys, like, I think like the third youngest or someone like that to do it or the fastest to get to 500 points. And you look at Eichel and you're like, man, you don't really want this guy to just to stay there and just die off because he's on a bad team. Yeah. And I don't know why Buffalo for the last three seasons, they're like, we're going to roll with Linus Allmark and see what he does. And you're like, you've seen this for the last two seasons that this guy's not the deal. And you are yeah. once again, riding with Linus Allmark who has done nothing for you in goal. He's not right. a carry price where you can be no sh- for sure that this guy might carry you. You have Linus Allmark. You've seen this for two seasons. That's not helped. Why are you sticking with this guy? It's not working out. Get another goalie. Yeah. <laughs> or you're just going to stink. You can have, you know, uh, Darlene, you can have Yoki Haru, you can have all these guys. Not going to matter very much if your goalie can't stop a puck. Just ask San Jose, because now if think they think that Martin Jones and Devin Dumnik are going to be something. It's just like Buffalo with Lance Allmark. This guy might do something. No, he's not. Cut your ties. Get a guy who's going to actually stop pucks. I just you have, picked a, up, you have a goalie, I, I, you're going to stink. I just picked up a 90 Linus Allmark in NHL 21 on Xbox, and I sold him for like 40,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Later, dude. Yeah. I don't want you on my team. Even at a 90 <laughs> card, bye. Yeah, yeah. That 90 card, you play, you play against anyone on like you know on a hut, and you just get absolutely just worked for like five <laughs> goals a game. You're like, this is this 90's not even worth it. I'll go get an 87, you know. Kevin Lincoln and he'll probably stop more pucks than this guy would (laughs) just because I mean, they're, they're almost in the same situation in my eyes as Edmonton, you know, you have what with Edmonton, you've got Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And then you got Miko Koskinen and Mike Smith. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they're, they're not great. You know, that's why I've heard a lot of rumors on Twitter about them making a trade for a big goalie, like a, you know, I've seen stuff for uh, Corpusalo in Columbus. I've seen stuff for um, Kristen Jari. I've seen stuff for uh, Chris Dreiger in Florida since, you know, he's doing better than Bobrovsky right now, which I'm loving. But yeah, me too. It's, I mean, it's, I think I think Penguins fans might be okay with getting rid of Justin Jari because the fact that he's doing absolutely nothing for them right now. So, I mean, I, I don't know. He was really good last year. 
Um, he was really oh, good last year he was yeah this year not so much I mean ask Penguins fans now they might be like yeah we might we might we're okay with getting rid of him possibly <laughs> if Edmonton has if Edmonton wants any hope at keeping McDavid for the long long term future they better trade for a goalie uh, because sooner or later Connor is is, is going to want to get out of there because if he stays in Edmonton his whole his whole career he's going to end up being and and they don't finally get a goalie he's going to be like the Dan Marino. Uh, of the NHL, oh. just one of the greatest of all time, but he's just never going to win a championship. Yeah. And it's not going to, and it's not going to be his fault. It's not no. going to be his fault. And whatsoever. It's, it's almost one of those things that they can't be going for a, Hey, we're going to go trade for Carter Hutton. No, it needs to be a caliber of, Hey, we're going to go trade for a Tuka Rask type thing. Yeah. Carter yeah. Hart, like Carter Hart, maybe, or on some, I'll get like a mega deal for Vasilevsky or, Ty, or Bennington or someone that's going to mm-hmm. actually do something. Robin Leonard, you know, somebody like you can't go for a second tier goalie. You, you need like a top tier or even dang near almost elite goalie at this point, because right now, whatever you're working with is not going to be it. You can't go for some sub mid decent guy. Like, Oh, let's go get, you know, Markstrom or someone else that might do something for us. Like, no, you need an actual goalie who's yeah. going to stop pucks. Because especially how how much offense has been really ramped up this year, you can't you can't rest on your laurels of a good defense and a mediocre goaltender because it's just not going to work out with how many goals are getting scored this season. It's at a ridiculous rate that it has been. Yeah, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, like you see some of these games that are constantly six to five, five to four. You know the. Rangers just beat the Bruins. I think it was what six to two, and it's it's crazy, you know. Yeah, and the and the Rangers score like two goals in like twelve seconds, which is an absolute just ridiculous rate of yeah. how teams are just putting pucks in net. I mean, I mean, hey, six and twelve. I mean, two and twelve is pretty is pretty good. But I mean, if you, unless you're doing a Stanley Cup game where you do tw- a two and seventeen, I'm not going to be impressed. <laughs> yeah. Just had to stick that knife a little bit deeper in for the Bruins fans. Shannon, what's up? <laughs> it's fine. No big deal. <laughs> F- fuck Boston. <laughs> Boston. Go to the harbor. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, um, fuck, fuck Boston. Any, any Boston. Any Boston sports team can go to hell. Anyway. <laughs> Whoa. Um, All right. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forget. Yeah, that's right. The, the Patriots fan of the podcast. Jeez, yeah, you, Jeez. you, you know, Old I don't school. even like Jeez. I don't even like it's just it's just Boston has just been so spoiled for the last what 20 years. Yes, sports. they have. You, yeah, go ahead. The, the, can, yeah, the yeah, the Red Sox. And I'm not upset. Four, I, the Celtics. Like <laughs> as a Patriots, Patriots fan, I literally have said the Patriots could go 0 and 16 every season for the rest of my life, and I'm still happy because yeah. there's so many things. Like, for example, the Cubs went how long? What 106 years? Without a championship, I got to see one hundred and eight. It's one hundred and I'm not upset. <laughs> well, the Cubs were one hundred and eight. I know this because it. Mm, Chad Chad knows Chad Chad knows the pain of. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I I still I still can't watch Game Seven. I've I have not watched Game Seven, and when they dropped that Francisco Lindor documentary this past off season, they were they started off with that game. I'm like, nope, nope, can't do it. Sorry. Yeah. Not ready for this. We'll talk about it it. more one day. I promise. We'll watch it one day. As as much as I can't watch game seven, I will forever watch. I will forever watch that Rajai Davis home run. Oh, you have to. In that game. game. (laughs) I will forever watch it. (laughs) Yeah, that moment. That moment. Yes, I'll watch that. Anything else around that? Not so much. (laughs) You know what's weird? You know what's weird? And like, obviously, I know it's a hockey podcast, but we'll get off of it. I was working that game, right? And as soon as that home run, as soon as that home run was hit, that was the first time in that game you felt like it was a home game for the Indians. There were so many Cubs fans. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> in crazy. that stadium. It was crazy. There were so many. Well, anyway, I, dig- yeah. I digress. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, we'll see, we'll save attendance stuff for the uh, other podcast that I do when we actually talk about baseball. We're talking about just attendance in general for Indians games, but we'll save that for another podcast yeah. for another time. But. <laughs> right. Uh, um, all right. So, Alex, you ready to move on to period two and talk about your uh, about your Blue Jackets? Because your background right now, for those who are going to watch the video podcast of this, is going to understand why well, I'm bringing this up. For we'll those go ahead. The audio version, Alex has a nice background of Jackets fans 
with paper bags over their heads. And Alex, <laughs> do, you want, do you want to tell us why that's the case? Well, you know what? Are, what we're going to do, one? we'll get the blue jackets and we'll <laughs> actually talk about them in period three. And the reason I say that is because right now they are currently 31st in the NHL power rankings. So last for last, I am okay with that. <laughs> so we can save that. Oh, goodness, goodness. Um, oh yeah, it's man, embarrassing. That is, that is it is bad. it's embarrassing to be a Blue Jackets fan right now. But you know what? We'll go ahead and talk about your Blackhawks. Get whatever nonsense you have out of the way <laughs> because I've got some words and I got some stuff to say. Blue Jackets suck. All right, Blackhawks. Uh, we'll start. I hate Patrick Kane. <laughs> First off, <laughs> I am oh, over I Patrick this. Kane. I don't want to see this clown anymore. Oh okay. man, dude, dude, the the your just your tears are just so fascinating to just 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 give me all your tears to drink up because this is just fantastic. How salty you are right now for the fact that Patrick Kane once again proved to you why he's your daddy. Cause that was sad, dude. Like you get <laughs> you talked so much smack before this series started, like how you're gonna beat us and blah 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 and all this other stuff, and you get swept. I don't Just care left. about Patrick Kane doing well. You know what? That's <laughs> what well, was it? The celebration? No, no, no. Was it no, the no. celebration that got you? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with it. Patrick Kane is good. He is Patrick Kane. I'm not mad that he does well. What I'm pissed about is we gave up a shutout to Malcolm Subban <laughs> of oh, every goalie man. available in the NHL. We gave up a shutout. We basically just handed a shutout to an AHL backup goalie. That's what we just did. That was his second career shutout, too, and that was his first with the Blackhawks. Yeah, you're welcome. And this, and this is a guy who played for five minutes last season. He's played more this year than he did last year. He gave him his first ever shutout for the Blackhawks in the second of his career. Can we talk about how bad that first period was, though, for the fact it was like, what, combined 10 shots on goal? It was teams? so boring. So boring. Chad, Chad I'm a, I know you probably watched this game, right? Did you watch the game last night? I, I, I was able, I didn't see the first period, but I saw the second and third. Yeah. The, I was at work on Fortress. I was listening to um, the radio, you know, the Hawks radio and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. WGN. And it was a very boring first period for the fact that, like I said, 10 total shots in the black black Hawks had three shots on goal that first period. And we still mm-hmm. won two nothing technically one, nothing because you know, empty net for the second, but I mean, 1.5 yeah. to nothing. 1.5. <laughs> yeah. That works, but I mean, Alex, though, man, a shutout to Malcolm Subban, <laughs> and and you and you had to lose it in the third period to Patrick Kane, just absolutely just making your defense basically do what they've been doing all year, not not being existent. Like, well, how does that make you? How does that make you feel? To be fair, Kane, <laughs> that that puck just kind of, uh, what was it? I think DeBrinket had the puck, and he tried to throw it out front and it just happened to land right in front of Kane. And we didn't really have any defense in position at the point. So he had a, just, he had a solid shot at coming up on the, um, on Corpy's left side and just had an open shot. If you give him an open shot, 90% chance he's going to score it. He always oh, yeah, cause, does. Yeah. Cause he sniped it. He absolutely yeah. sniped him in the perfect spot. And that's just what Patrick Kane does. It's just, but it doesn't help. Well, that the were- Blue Jackets had 5,287 uh, goal posts hitting the crossbar, and you know what? I think we had a combined one shot on a power play the entire time when Tuesday we were three for four. It, does, it's, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. You, hate you can blame it. you can blame you can blame Boone on that one, Alex. Yeah, <laughs> you can blame Boone on that one. <laughs> Boone didn't get on. Boone didn't get off the ice fast enough, and and Eric Robinson had to kind of stay like stay by the bench because Boone wasn't off yet. Otherwise, it would have been too many men. And sure enough, Kane. Yep. Kane did did what Patrick Kane does and uh, scores goals. I, I'm I'm trying to be as neutral as I can here, boys, because as you know, I'm uh, I'm a fan of both teams. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to shit on the jackets, but I'm trying not to, you know, trying to to to, to show my excitement for the Hawks too. <laughs> yeah, for the for those who don't follow Garage Beers on on uh, TikTok, which I recommend you do. I'm not on TikTok myself, but I watch them on the tw- on Twitter and stuff like that, which is still phenomenal stuff. But yeah, if you, you go follow Garage Beers on TikTok, yeah, you know, Chad and Michael as co-hosts, they do a lot of good TikToks. Um, you know, a lot of them for Ohio teams. I'm excited to see the Indians tiktoks when that season starts but oh yeah the ones where you have the when you do your jackets recaps they're just so fun <laughs> to watch especially too when you have 
them against the Blackhawks and you see you swapping jerseys. Fantastic work. <laughs> Top yeah. notch. Thank Top you. Notch Thank work. you very much. Thank you very yeah. much. I, uh, I yeah. had to eat my feel. I, since we label ourselves a, uh, a Ohio uh, sports podcast. So I, I, I'm kind of, uh, is kind of kind of singled out as singled out as the, as the Blue Jackets recap. So I kind of have to, uh, I kind of yeah. have to play it off, but I am a fan of both teams. And uh, yeah, There's so with that. <laughs> this, the, these eight games that the Jackets and Hawks play are just really bittersweet for me. If, if it's <laughs> yeah. to, to put it like you're, that. You're, you're, you're basically waiting for this season to end so that we can go back to our own conferences and you're like, all right, I don't feel so bad now about wanting to <laughs> crap on the blue jackets because they're not longer in our conference and our division. Right. <laughs> Right, right. I mean, it's I've such had, an emotional it, roller coaster because every game the Jackson Hawks play, I'm like, yeah, uh, pull that, uh, oh, fuck, the white, yay. <laughs> you're like, I want one of you to win. Go team. And it's like, which team? Yeah. I don't know. You, you, yeah. you basically should get like one, like just get like one of those like like uh, combined jerseys, like one side's Blackhawks, one side's Jackets, and it's just <laughs> sewed them together. You, yeah. you, you've seen these abominations. Like some people do these to these jerseys. Oh, the house divided. Oh, but we're talking like full jerseys. Oh, yeah. Like those are side I mean, note who, if you wear jerseys like that, just don't. Well, just, just don't. I, and I will say that to 99% of people, for example, Seth Jones, his mom has one that is his Jersey and his brother's Jersey. I'm okay yeah, with that's that. different. Yeah. No, if you're, if you are a parent or a sibling of someone who's a professional athlete, you have two on different teams you get a free pass. But if you're just a fan of two different teams and you do that just because like I've got a Jersey, it's Patrick Kane and uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. They're just both my favorite player. Like uh, I'm just going to punch you straight in the face right now. Okay. If, If someone's ever wearing a blues slash blue jackets sweater at the same time, there is a special place in hell for you because you do not like both teams. Chad, you know, you mean blues and Blackhawks. Yeah, you blues said, and blackhawks. You whatever. said blues and blue jackets. Whatever. What I mean, blues and blue jackets look the same. You know, they're blue. That's fine. whatever. Be, uh, but but uh, check, check <laughs> gets what I'm saying though. Blues and blackhawks. Yeah, you don't like both teams. That's just hard no sin. That's, that's <laughs> hard like, no sin. That's like Steelers and Browns. Like, oh, I'm a fan of both <laughs> teams. It's like, <laughs> no, you pick one or the other. That's just not how it works. And no, yeah, yeah, but. Well, the only that, other one I saw, the only, the only other one I saw that was acceptable was AJ Hawk's wife, because he's Brady Quinn's sister. When Ohio State played, oh uh, yeah, Notre Dame, and she had that jersey on. Yeah, that's yeah. the only that's the only other acceptable split jersey that I've seen. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. Go go. I don't know. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, random fans shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, or or no. Here's a, here's another one. Being a random fan, wearing a jersey of a of a team. That's not even playing in that game that you're at. Cause I was at a, no, oh. sorry. This isn't a, this, I know not a hockey, not a hockey thing, but I was at a Browns Ravens game back, you know, the upper dog pound when the Browns beat the Ravens. I think it was like 13 or I think it was like 13. There was a Steelers fan who showed up in a Steelers Jersey and sat in the dog pound at a Ravens Browns game. And of course we had to give it to him, you know, asshole, yeah. asshole the entire game. Cause like, come on, you don't, don't do not be that person. They're showing with another game in a team's Jersey. That's not even playing in that game. Dude, come to you're Columbus, just, come. go to any blue jackets game. And you're going to see that one loser showing up in a damn penguins Jersey. Like oh, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's the blue jackets and yeah. the Minnesota wild playing go away. Like I've yeah. gone to, there was one game. I know last season I went, I think it was the blue jackets and um, I think it was the who was it? Was, I'm pretty sure it was the Blue Jackets and the Capitals in Columbus. And I saw, I think it was like 13 different jerseys. I know I saw the Penguins, I saw Blackhawks, I saw Vegas, I saw the Lightning. Um, yeah. Pretty sure I saw the Blues. Pretty sure I saw the Red Wings. Like, go away, go all, just go home, all you, all you play Fortnite, do- and get out of here. No one cares. <laughs> Like I, honestly, if you're like if like if I go to a game that I'm like you know the Blackhawks or the Browns, whoever they're not playing, and I'm just going to a game because you know hey it's like hey I got a free ticket you want to go, yeah I'll go I'll drink some beer have some food why not, I'll go in like in a neutral shirt or you know get like a cheap ball you know borrow the buddy's ball cap and just wear something to the game. It's like I'm not going to show up in another team's jersey. That's just a dick move. Like why are you doing that? Yeah, 
I saw someone wearing a basketball jersey to a hockey game one time, and I'm like, wrong sport here, bud. Why are you wearing your Michael Jordan Bulls jersey to a hockey game? Like, well, I've worn yeah. a I've worn a basketball jersey, but there's a reason because it was '90s night, and my friend and I showed up, and we wore our Toon Squad jerseys. From, oh, that's different. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's a different. Yeah, if it's I a mean, special, like, yeah, like I say, but then we're talking like, yeah, some. Something stupid, but no, if it's 90s night, that in the cup I game mean, seven, wearing my Larry Bird jersey. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. You'll see it at Cavs games too. You'll see like the Cavs will be playing the Pistons and someone will show up in a Utah Jazz jersey. Like no one, like no one cares that you're a fan of Donovan Mitchell at, at, at the Cavs Pistons game. Like I, I I don't know. Take it off. Yeah, the, the only jersey that might be acceptable for you to wear that's like not the team that the Cavs are playing is probably LeBron James because Everyone loves LeBron James. Well, I'm talking. I'm not talking about the Cavs, LeBron James. Like, a, like a Lakers or a Miami Heat. If you wear a Miami Heat LeBron jersey, you're asking for someone just to you know sock you in the face because we all know how that went down. But Lakers, not so much. But if you wear a Miami Heat LeBron jersey, you're asking for issues. <laughs> That's all I can say. But, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm so over seeing the Blackhawks. I, uh, I, I want to get to next year. I'm tired of it. I hate you all. Two more times. Two more times. Two more times. Hey, hey Alex, you can always just forfeit those two games and just give it to us. We'll we'll love to take those four points off you. I mean, you're going to give it to us anyway. Just no, give it to we us. might as well play those two games and let Kane get seven points between the two. Hey, he he only needs he only needs one more goal to get yeah. 400. So I mean, why oh, not? speaking of, I actually saw it earlier. Brad Marchand got his 300th career goal. Not that anyone oh, cares, but oh, still. that's cute. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you know what? A rat needs to do something great in his life. So I mean, yeah. good for him, I Fine. guess. That's like him finding a brand new sewer that's never been touched. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can lick the sewer plate. <laughs> Absolutely. I, 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 I can I, lick I, the manhole cover. <laughs> I contemplated making that joke, but I'm so glad you did it, Chad. Because <laughs> that, I got you, Zach. I got you back. I got you back. I got your brother. Thanks, brother. But no, but okay. go back to but go back to that first game though. You know, earlier in the week, you know, that, that six five shootout. That was um, that was an interesting game for the fact that we got up multiple times and you guys would just not go away. Like, what Soderberg scored and Kaner scored, and then Atkinson gets it super late, and then Line A scores, Hagel Line A again, Kubalik, and in the third period, uh, you know what? If we want to play Bjorkstrand anymore, I would not be upset about that because for whatever reason, this guy just would not go away. He scores two goals in the third to make us go to overtime after Adam Boquist puts us up enough where it's like, oh, it's 5-3. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna win this game. Nope. Yeah. Bjorkstrand says no. <laughs> it's like, can this guy go like go away, please? Yeah, like, and that's that's other taking that game out of the equation, he's been super quiet lately. Yeah, I mean he's really not not done much. Do you do you think it's the early contracts or the contracts kind of get into him a little bit, or is no. it just one of those things? He Bjorky is he normally starts off slow. Yeah. He can never start a season off just blazing hot. He starts it off slow, and typically in a normal season, he would be getting hot around middle of January. Yeah. And then he'll just go on a tear the rest of the year. That was happening last season. He was going crazy, and then he got hurt. And then the season got caught, uh, paused. So yeah. it is what it is. But How, how about how about Line a and Roslovic, though? Like, both of these guys, like, because anyway, I know we talked about Roslovic in the last episode. Um, you know, like how he's just gone absolutely off. You know, almost he's scoring a point almost every game, and Line is basically on the same pace. Like, those guys, like, how do you feel overall just with having – seeing line a, you know, full force and Roslovic playing really well. Like you have to think that that you guys have to have won that trade just for the fact you got two guys. Now that are putting pucks in that, you know, other than last night, they're usually doing pretty well for you guys. Like, I mean, how you, it's, how are you feeling about it so far with that trade? It's nice. Um, I don't want to make too much of an objective opinion on it because line a still is technically a free agent after the year. And I don't, I don't want to say somebody won the trade yet because, you know, we could sit there and sign him to a two-year deal. And then after Pierre-Luc Dubois' contract is up, they could sign him to an eight-year deal. In that yeah. case, the Jets would win that trade ultimately. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but my opinion, I think Roslovic, in, unless he takes a drastic dip in performance, I think he'll be in Columbus the rest of his career. He loves it here. Um, oh, yeah. That, that, I mean, like I said, we've talked about it before. That was nice of uh, Winnipeg to throw line in that Roslovic yeah. field of yeah, how, was, about for the, how about for the fact that Winnipeg is calling Dubnik Doobie? Like, really? That's your nickname you're going to give him? Doobie with one Dude. B. Hey, we had right. Brandon Dubinsky. His was Doobie, D U B I. That's what we called him. So, yeah, but I, I, I saw some Jackets fans kind of lose their minds that Winnipeg is calling him Doobie with a Y. It's like, oh, so they're not taking, so they're taking our guy, but they're also kind of taking a nickname that we've used for a player. <laughs> Doobie, though, like that's all you can come up with is Doobie. Like, all right. Cool. I mean, they're not I mean, listen, they're smart up there, so that's fine. I mean, listen, <laughs> weed is legal everywhere in Canada. So, I mean, it just does not. <laughs> very does true. Does not surprise me. I mean, hey, I mean, the Maple Leafs, technically, if you look at their logo close enough, it, you could almost mistaken it for one. So, I mean, you, you could be right there, Chad. I mean, so like, what are your thoughts overall with you know the Jackets picking up Line A and Rossovic and seeing what they're doing so far? You know, after because I know you probably saw that ridiculous shift from PLD really early on in the season. Like, what are your thoughts overall with that whole situation and, you know, having those guys on the jackets now after that trade? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I mean, the fact that they're doing what they're doing now, it just kind of makes it all worth it because it was clear that PLD didn't want to be here anymore. I mean, it, it just, it just went to, it was evidenced by, you know, his effort in the last couple of games that he was here. I mean, and Torts knew it, and it was definitely more of a problem in the locker room than they were letting on to be. Yeah. Um, as far as Line and Roslovic go, uh, that top line is just for the Jackets is just. I mean, it's incredible right now that they just keep producing, and it's also helped out by the fact that uh, Cam is being Cam again, and he's he's scoring goals. Oh, yeah. So uh, you know that that. That top line is, I, I mean, if I'm towards, obviously I'm, I, I'm not changing that one bit. And, you know, line A is, you know, he's starting to get comfortable uh, in, in this offense. He's going to his spot, you know, the, the OV spot right there at the top of the circle in the slot. Uh, and, I mean, that's, that's, that's his, that's his moneymaker. That's, that's, that's his corner three. <laughs> like like yeah. I mean, if you give him an open shot there, he's going to put it in net. And that's exactly what he does. So I, I think they've been good for the Jackets. I mean, Roslovic is getting a chance to show his potential and, and to show what he can do. Uh, yeah, I, I, and he's doing well. So I think that I think that trade has been very well for the Jackets because, especially especially from a standpoint that Line A gives you something that you haven't had since. Well, I mean, it's only what been what one or two years, but he's 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 he's, he's he gives you something that you were missing with Panarin. I mean, he's your best he's your best offensive weapon. Now, granted, he's not as skilled as Panarin, but any time Line A shoots the puck, it can go in the back of the net. He's, yeah. he's just that good. He's that, he's that good of a sniper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Panarin was more of the playmaker. I think p- the difference between the two, Panarin showed a ton of confidence with the puck. And yeah. Line A, I mean, he has it, but he's not the skilled player of, you know, being able to maintain control of the puck in tight spaces. He's not like that. But you right. get him out in the open – Oh yeah, you have a very high chance that that puck is going to be buried. Yeah, 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 no, I totally agree. I mean, and then you have PLD over in Winnipeg, and he's centering the third line right now. So I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, it, it kind of, I it, you know, for starting, like I'm not going to like like you said, Alex. I'm not going to say that they won the trade, but certainly the the for, from a production standpoint to start off with. To start off with, it looks like Columbus is so far winning the trade because yeah. Winnipeg's Winnipeg's winning games right now, but it's not because of PLD. No. How do you how do you guys feel about the whole Max Domi situation? Because for whatever reason, Max is still not figuring it out for you guys. And I'm curious to see what the what the, are the Jackets going to try to hold on to him, or do you think this is going to be a potential? Yeah, we're going to have to trade Max for someone else because this is just not working. Like. Um, yeah, Right now, my eyes, he's he's in his own head, honestly. He's mm-hmm. just in his own head. Um, it's a weird season for everybody. That's why I'm glad they got him for a two-year contract. Yeah. Um, the only way, in my opinion, that they don't 
I'm not saying that he does resign, but I, in my eyes, the only way that they don't try to continue to keep him is if somebody would be willing to trade and get him in exchange for a big name center. Because we don't have a center. That's the problem. We don't have a center anymore. Pierre Luc Dubois was our center. Now, granted, Jack Roslevic was a winger in Winnipeg. He came over. He's at center. He's doing really well. So, cool. He's a, considered a center. Boone Jenner plays center. He's not a center. He's a winger. He's a natural winger. Same thing with Alexander Texier. Same thing with Riley Nash. Same thing. Like the, I'd say the only guy that we have is that's actually a center is Kevin Stenland. But now they're throwing him on the wing. And I th- we just we need a solid center that can go between the first and second line because we don't have that. That's the problem. Because then you have – you know, we have guys like Nick Felino's playing center, then Boone Jenner, then Kevin Stenland, then Riley Nash, then Alexander Texier, then Emil Bemstrom, then Liam Foody. Like, it makes no sense. We don't have a guy who's consistently up the middle. Um, I, I honestly, I just think he's in his own head because we've seen what he can do. We saw what he can do with Montreal. Yeah. And he's good. He's a very good player. He's that little pissant that won't go away. But we haven't seen that yet. That's the problem. We yeah. started to see a glimpse of it last night, but he just still is not 100% there. It's, I don't know if it's a confidence thing. It's a different system. I have no idea, but it, there's more to him than, there, than we've been able to see so far. Yeah. Chad, so I know we're, I know we're before we go to the third period, so I want to ask you one thing with the Blackhawks, real quick. So, what are your thoughts overall with how Kevin Lincoln has been for the fact that no one, saw this kid just blowing up. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, talks like, oh, this kid has a lot of upside. You know, he did leave Finland to the world, you know, the ice world championships back in 1819, you know, and the fact that this guy's coming in and just absolutely blown the doors off and just has a ridiculous save percentage, you know, granted the six, five game was just absolutely just weird because, you know, our defense can show up when it wants to, and then doesn't want to, when it just doesn't feel like it. So I can't give, like these six, five games or these five goal games up to Kevin because our defense is really Jekyll and Hyde most nights, but overall he's been playing really well. And there's talks of him, you know, putting his name in for the Calder and some are saying even the Vesna right now, granted it is a short, it's a small, you know, window and, you know, what we're going off with, but what are your thoughts overall with just Kevin Lincoln? And do you think that he has a legitimate shot at winning the Calder this year if he keeps this pace up? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And look, six, five games are going to happen. I mean, it's just with any goalie. I mean, there's just going to be nights where you just don't have it, whether it be your defense, uh, whether it be your defense isn't playing well in front of you and you're just not tracking the puck. Well, six, five games are just, they're, they're, they're it's, it's, it's going to happen. But yeah. as far as overall, uh, <laughs> listen, he keeps playing the way they're playing. This rebuild is going to be shortened because, Thank uh, goodness. Thank because goodness. with, because with, um, you know, you have a core, even when, even when Cave, Kane and Taves' time is up, you know, to bring it, Kubelik and Doc is, is a core you can build around. And oh, those guys, sure. especially Kubelik and to bring it, I mean, to bring it, I mean, you, you know, you know what to bring it is. He's been showing it the last couple of years, but, to, uh, you know, Kubelik is a player. Doc, when he's healthy is a, I mean, he's, he's kind of reminiscent. He's kind of a, a younger Jonathan Taves. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, so, so it's just, uh, you know, I, I do. I think if he keeps playing the way he's playing, this this rebuild is going to be shortened because he's going to be your goalie for a long time if oh, uh, yeah. if he keeps this pace up. For sure, definitely. And you also like all the younger guys too. I mean, you got Ian Mitchell is going to look really good with us. You, know, you got Kalanuck, you know, winning in the wings. He just got sent down to Rockford, um, you know, and stuff like that. And you got Pius Suter and you know Philip Kurashev. Yeah, and yeah. it's just. And from well, how good the young guys are doing, the fact that Patrick Kane is loving playing with this team right now, like he's smiling and having so much fun. Like you, I don't think you've seen this the last couple of years with just no. everything that's been going after, you know, they fired Q. It's been like, you can tell like the, like the main core of like Keith, you know, Kaner and Taze, it seems like they're not really having fun in this season for whatever reason. It's just like with how good our young guys have been for the fact of where this team's at right now. No one had the Blackhawks where they're at right now. They're like, they're either going to finish seventh or they're going to finish eighth in this division. And they're going to mm-hmm. be towards like the bottom five of the entire league. And right now I think we're like fourth in win percentage and like, we're like top 
like 10 in the league right now. Like this team yeah. is playing so ridiculously good. And like you said, if Lincoln keeps playing the way he does, yeah, the rebuild is going to be so much shorter. And we finally figured out because we didn't know what we we're going to do with our goalies. And now it's like, it's almost like that, that, you know, that with what the Blackhawks front office did, you know, Bowman and all that took that shot of like, we're going to go with our younger guys, see how this works out. And everyone's like, oh, this is not going to work out. This this defense isn't that good. These guys are going to get lit up. And for whatever reason, it's just like Lincoln is coming in. And he's just like, okay, hold my beer and watch this. I'm just going to be just stopping pucks on, on the regular. And like you said, yeah, this we're looking at a smaller rebuild. And we have all these young guys we have coming up now and all these young defensemen that are supposed to be really good. You know, hopefully if Adam Boquist figures it out and, you know, at the brink it. Mm-hmm. finds that stroke that he had a couple of years ago where he's dumping pucks in the net and, you know, leading the team and scoring and stuff like that. And all of our young guys just keep getting better. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see what the Blackhawks do when we're not looking at a Detroit Red Wings or an Ottawa Senators five plus year rebuild. We're looking at like what, maybe one or two at the most, maybe three. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited for what mm-hmm. this team does, especially with just Lincoln in, you know, like I said, Kershev, Suter, Ian Mitchell, Boquist, you know, if Strom figures it out, get Strom going, get Doc back. When he when we get him back, he's going to be the, our number two center. This team, this team is going to be fun to watch for a long time. If all these start clicking and we get everyone healthy and back, well, it's like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Lankinen's doing insane. I mean, in my yeah. eyes, he is he is rookie of the year so far. Um, oh, he's got he's got to win the Calder for sure. He, he you can almost pencil him in as a possible like top five Vesna goalie right now. Just the way he's playing. I know it's a small I mean, sample size. Yeah, but he's playing really well, though. I mean, but it, it's it's one of those things. I think it. You know, you have Lincoln in coming in, and I'm not saying he's the greatest goalie in the world, but the kid has a ton of confidence, and you can see it in his play. Yeah. Um, but you know, in conjunction with that, you're getting that, and you get you're getting these young guys pieced together who all just magically have this insane chemistry with each other. You know, you can, I hate watching the damn games against the Blackhawks because these kids who are 21, 22, 23 look so much more comfortable than Nick Felino and Boone Jenner and Seth Jones. And it's it's frustrating because, you know, for, from a Blackhawks standpoint, you guys have nothing to be worried about. You really don't. You know, you get Taze back and he's healthy. You have a solid group of guys. And like Chad said, when Taze and Kane are gone, you still have a good group of guys to build around. So it's one of those things that you have to, I think they need to kind of pick and choose to an extent of who they really want to build around. And, you know, another big piece is um, Nikita Zadorov. If, mm-hmm. you know, I- if if he can – improve his defensive structure and his defensive game and you guys get him to a, a good deal for multiple years he could be a big core in your defensive end because what duncan keith is 37 he's up and, there yeah, 100 up there. 137, 137 137 my bad my bad yeah yeah, yeah. i mean if, if we if we can get Ian Mitchell to be the guy that he's supposed to be, how he played at Denver, we're gonna be really good. And if we get Kalanuk to be the guy that he was at Wisconsin, our def our defense, and if we if Adam Boquist ever figures it out for more than one game, our defensive core is gonna be young and really good. And gotta give it to our European scouts to find two guys from the Swiss League in Kershev and Suter. And for the fact that we got Kubelik out of the Czech Republic, and the fact we got this young stud out of Germany who's supposed to be coming up around coming in the next couple of years. Yeah. Are you, we're we're going to be fine with young guys in the future. Cause right now, for whatever reason, our European scouts are absolutely killing it with these picks. Yeah. Cause it's yeah, crazy and, where we're at right now. Yeah. And you know, um, you know what another thing it is too is um, hang on here in a second. I'm, I'm, I'm looking up something real fast. Okay. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> so, it, it, and that's what it was going to take for this rebuild to be shortened uh, here. Zach is, you needed the young guys to step up and that's exactly what they're doing this year. Last couple of years, they were developing and they needed to step up. But another part about that was, is with the Blackhawks being in salary cap hell and not being able to, and not being able to uh, add anybody, you know, anything of significance uh, to any sort of large contracts, you can't miss like with how much money, you know, is being tied up between Taves and Kane and Keith's contract along with uh, Seabrook. You can't you can't yeah. miss 
Yeah, you can't, can't miss on, on those marginal signings. And one of the guys that's doing like stepping up like that and is a marginal signing this year is Carl Soderberg. Oh, for sure. And, yeah. That was, that was a crazy, it's crazy how good he's been playing for us. And uh, even Walmart and Yanmark too, like mm-hmm. getting those yeah. guys on good deals as well. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You just can't miss uh, on those marginal signings. Like they have in the past, like Chris Kunitz <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or Brand, uh, Brandon Manning or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, the Soderbergh, the marginal signings have been doing great for him this year. And that's, a, yeah. that's exactly the for, like, well, the formula of why the Blackhawks are doing as well as they are right now. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not upset one bit of how we're doing right now. It's it's good to see because I, I, I was almost talking this season. I was like, you know what? Wins are going to be great. I'm not going to put so much stock into them, but I'm going to enjoy like the when we do win. And mo- I just want to see the young guys develop and get good. And for the fact that they're getting good, and we're playing well. It's fantastic to see. And the fact that you're seeing, you know, Patrick Kane with an A, Debrinka with an A, Murph with an A when he's there, Shawzi gets an A when he's playing. It's just, and just to see how much fun Patrick Kane's having with these young guys. It's it's refreshing to see that this is a fun team to watch. And it's it's I think we're gonna I think we're in good hands for a good while, especially if we keep this going. And the fact that Patrick Kane keeps playing like Patrick Kane does. This is this is gonna be a fun season. I'm I'm excited to see how the rest of the year goes for sure. It's gonna be a good time. I agree. So, Alex, are you ready to fully? T- I know I know we, I know we did talk. We did touch the Blue Jackets a little bit in that second <laughs> segment. But uh, how? What are your thoughts of this past week of your Blue Jackets? Because the only team because my team has only faced you guys twice, and we played we play a weekend series against. Detroit tomorrow night and Sunday. So we I only got two games to talk about, but for you, my friend, how are you feeling right now with your blue jackets? First, this is period three, the Kansas Tom Hawks podcast presented by Bellage sports <laughs> sponsored by pure Hawkins by optic. Okay. Um, they suck right now. <laughs> they don't look <laughs> so last night was probably the best Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski looked to me. Um, What's just saying some. Yeah, I know. Uh, Michael Delzato has been our best defenseman all year. Hands has, down, that, no questions that, asked. That has to be really sad to the guy who got a PTO is your best defenseman right now. And you have Seth Jones, and Zach Wierenski on your defense. Well, after this year, I don't, I really don't look at PTOs too hard because Mike Hoffman got a PTO. Like, it is what it is. Still, um, though, we're talking about Del Zotto here. We're not talking about Mike Hoffman. It, Del Zotto is also a Stanley Cup winning defenseman. Touche. Touche. So, <laughs> touche, it, my friend. It, it's one of those things, you know, he played with Torts in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, so he knew him. He knew his yeah. system and he dealt with the nonsense with Torts. He was in the doghouse a lot, but he was one of the few guys who's an adult and says, hey, I'm not going to be pissed off at my coach. I'm going to just get mad at myself because I'm playing terribly. Okay, I'm going to fix that. Cool. Hey, I realized how much he changed me and helped me to develop into a better player. Fine. Um, offense, at least the little that's there. Um, line A's looking decent. Uh, I, I think there's still some comfortability things that need to happen. You know, he, Roslevic, and Cam look good. Uh, Felino is terrible. Last night, I was getting so mad at David Savard. Um, giving up just these stupid plays and just these ridiculous turnovers that no one should ever be making. And I was so frustrated um, on on multiple levels is probably the easiest way to do it. But let's just say I was I was borderline hoping that I would wake up and see a notification from The Athletic on my phone saying, oh, Columbus fires John Torrella. I'd be like, oh, cool, sweet. All right, back to my day. Yeah, because because I know we were talking earlier. I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before. You're like you were talking like I don't even want to watch the game. I just want to go to the gym and just ignore this whole thing. It's so. it's frustrating, but the thing is, I'm used to it because, th- dude, this is Columbus, circa 2004, man. Like they they were horrendous, uh, and dude, you they don't know you randomly don't know. got into the playoffs one year and got obliterated by Detroit in the first round. Dude. And then they were just terrible again for a few years. But it's- let, let, hey, let me tell you, someone I remember the pre 2010 Blackhawks teams when we were absolute trash and no one was going to games. Or we're talking like 3,000 a game. 
I mean, I would say me and Chad probably watched them on TV, but you couldn't because the Blackhawks yeah. were not on TV. The Blackhawks were blacked out. Yeah, because the <laughs> before Rocky wore it's his father, Big Dollar Bill did not want to put them on TV, and that's why no one knew what the Blackhawks were doing because you could never see them on TV, and they were just trash teams. So, believe me, I've seen the really good in the Blackhawks. Thank goodness for three Stanley Cups, but we've also seen and heard really bad Blackhawks teams. So you'll be in good hands. Yeah. You only got you only got twenty years. You'll be. I've fine. seen I've seen five really good games from the Blue Jackets. Um, they're four <laughs> games against Tampa, and then the ten zero shutout against Montreal. Everything else was eh. <laughs> hey, well, what, what you guys talking about Toronto though? That's that's another few games. What are you talking about? What and technically the playoffs. So, yeah. Tell that to Edmonton when their fans got 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 all mad last year after the Blackhawks knocked them out in their home <laughs> barn. <laughs> oh well, it's I don't know. The, the the team is super frustrating right now because something's not clicking. And in my opinion, it seems like they've changed everything. And there's still that one common denominator that is still there and there are still issues. And I'm not saying that the issues are specifically being caused by torts, but it, everything else has changed. It seems like our entire offense has changed since he's been here. Our defensive core has all been drastically changed. We don't have Bobrovsky anymore. The go- There's something that's just not adding up and something that's just not clicking. And I'm not saying that firing a coaching staff is the answer, but it's one of those things that I, I don't know if we've hit the ceiling with torts. You know, granted, I know we won a Stanley Cup in 04, but I don't know if we've hit that ceiling with him to where we can't do much else with him i have no idea it just seems like there's there's one piece missing or something's just not working and it's just it i don't know i i really have no idea like you said too you're like you need a true top center and it seems like you guys because in this league like you really need a good solid like top one through three of good centers and like you said you guys got maybe one decent ish center well that's a true center it's like that's not really gonna help you guys out in the long term if along those lines man our our face-off percentage probably the last two weeks dude it is so bad like i think the only person we have on our team that has a face-off percentage over 50 percent is boone jenner and that's at like 54 that's not good if boone jenner leads your team in face-off percentage that's a that's winger somewhere. a winger Leads our team in face-off percentage. By Chad, way. Chad, what are you, what are your thoughts just overall with just how the jackets have been? Not even just the last this this last week, but just overall the last few. Like, how are you feeling uh, about this team? Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> everyone, 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 give Chad like a couple seconds while he drinks his like twentieth beer because <laughs> it's the jackets. <laughs> Listen, this team is, you know, as Alex said, it's just so frustrating, you know, and I, I think it is, I think a problem is torts. I think it might be a style issue, but at the same time, I think it's also a personnel issue. And, and I don't know, this team has the skill to be very aggressive offensively, but they're, they're, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the biggest reason, and one of the biggest reasons that they can't be very aggressive offensively is because they're not very fast in recovery. (laughs) No, no, they're not not. very fast. They're not very fast in transition. Mm -mm. Uh, You know, the, the, when, like the other night in that six, five game, when I saw them on their, on their one power play that failed and (laughs) the one power play that failed or or that they didn't score. Cause they were, I think they were three for four on the power play in that six to five loss. Yeah. Uh, but when that one, the one power play didn't, they didn't score a goal. When that power play finally went up and the Blackhawks just broke out and no one was around. Yeah. <laughs> they're just, they're just, this team just isn't that fast in transition back to the defensive end. And, you know, Seth Jones always talks about arriving in fives, but every time in, when they get back into their defensive zone, it's always, you know, they're arriving in twos and ones and threes. Like it's just, I don't know if they're just so frustratingly inconsistent. 
Yeah. And you, you see flashes, you see flashes of what this team can be when they're playing well, they, they, they'll shut you down defensively. They are so annoying to play when the, when, when the, when they're playing well, but it's just, I, I don't know. Like you said, Alex, it's just, something's not clicking. It's, it's very inconsistent and it, it's maybe a style issue with torts, but also players not buying it. I don't know. There's just, there's just a multitude of things that are so annoying. <laughs> I, I think, I think one thing with me, and this is the height of frustration and Chad, I know you can understand this. So we go from seeing the team that plays in the three Oh shutout where we just absolutely shut everything down against Nashville. And then whatever just crap decided to show up on the ice last night. Like th- this stuff happens in back-to-back games. The Blue Jackets, my eyes, even though we ended up losing, looked really good on Tuesday about the second two thirds of the game. And then yeah. over time they suck shootout. They suck, but you know, in, in regulation, they looked great. And then last night, it doesn't make any sense. You can go from such a powerful team to the beginning of the mighty ducks movie yeah. in two days. And I just, yeah. I don't understand how they can go from so good to just horrendous. And, and there's no changes. That's the thing. You're not changing the goalie. You're not really making any um, strong or solid lineup changes or anything like that. Like, I think the only, the biggest thing they did was put in Wierenski and take out Harrington. Yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't and, make any sense. And put in Bimstrom, take out Grigorenko, which Grigorenko, I'm – ready for the season to be over and him to walk on out and go back to the KHL or something. He's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I think another thing too is, and I, you know, I talked about this in one of my fire TikTok videos, guys. I don't know if you know this for us, podcast, follow <laughs> TikTok. Um, I, I, I really think they need to, I really think Torts needs to pick a goalie and stick with them. Not necessarily, not necessarily uh, sit, you know, sit, sit one or the other for too long. But I really think that it's not allowing your goalies to get in any sort of a rhythm. Like, I think when Elvis is healthy, I know he's on the shelf right now, but I think Elvis has been playing the best out of the both the goalies right now, uh, you know, so far this year. I think once he gets healthy again, I think you need to stick with him. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that gives your the guys in front of you uh, some confidence to know who's behind them and, and to know how well he's playing. Uh, and, and so maybe they can put forth the, the, the same exact effort. I don't know. All I know is just something's going on with Corpy and, and, and the defense. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I, I keep losing trains of thought because there's just so much that goes wrong with them. <laughs> with yeah. them. yeah. It's correct. Yeah. Cause if you look at, you know, the Blackhawks, you know, it was called and kept talking about, Oh, we're going to, we're going to go through a cycle of guys. We're going to not, we're going to go by goalie by committee. Then he sees that Lincoln is playing really well. I was like, all right, we're not really going to play the hot hand, but we're going to play him as much as we can and give him time off. And you see what a consistent goalie with more consistent time does. He gets comfortable in net. The team, the team gets comfortable around him, and you win games. And that's the crazy thing. Like when you see it between both the Hawks and the Jackets, you see a team that's comfortable with their goalie, and he's playing really well. And you look at the Jackets, and it's kind of like – they're not doesn't seem like they're really comfortable with their goalie. It's just, it, I mean, I could be off base with this, but this is what I'm just seeing between how both teams are playing. I'm like, what are your thoughts on that? Sports has there are so many things that don't make sense anymore. For example, Cam Atkinson, Jack Roslevic, and Patrick Line look amazing together. Um, Jack Rostovic and Cam have, first off, Jack Rostovic, his skating and his speed is insane. I did not know he was that fast and that good at skating, you know, with the puck. Cam is being Cam, like Chad said earlier. He's starting to be the Cam Atkinson we know and that we want. But then, you know, you'll play one shift into the game and Torch is like, all right, fuck it, let's go. We're going to move everyone around. You know what? Hey, Corpy, you're going to be on the line with Patrick Line. Like, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. And, you know, the fact yeah. that he's he doesn't stick with one person. Elvis, in one of his – I don't remember if it was a post game or one of the uh, media availabilities after practice. He said – somebody asked him, you know, is it easy to – you know, do you feel like you're able to get a rhythm when you're switching goalies every game? He said no. I, you can't get into a rhythm. You can't get comfortable. You can't get hot because then you have a game where you're like, oh, you know what? At the end, I feel good. I'm ready to go the next game. And then you don't. It, 
it doesn't make sense. You know, I, I get it from, if you think of it logically, I understand from both sides. You know, you have two solid goalies, play both of them. That way one doesn't get burnt out and one doesn't get tired. And then we don't risk an injury like we did with Corpy last year, well, in 2019 against, ironically, the Blackhawks. And we lose him and then he's, you know, selected for all-star game and he's out for however long but i mean that happened silver lining we got to see elvis's brilliance in that time yeah. also but it, there's it seems like there's no consistency at all and torts all he does is preach you know we need consistency we need cohesion and all this other stuff you're not letting these guys develop you have cam jack and and patty let them <laughs> They're playing well together. Let them sit there and grow more of a bond as a, as a line. Look what you had when you had um, Cam Atkinson, Artemi Panarin, and Pierre-Luc Dubois. That line was a line to piss people off in so many ways because Panarin drew guys away, Cam would score, and Pierre-Luc Dubois would throw everyone to the boards. Well, you kind of have that line again. Why not keep it? I I don't understand. You know, that was also like the line not really last year but the year before with uh boone jenner nick felino and josh anderson it was that line was designed specifically to get under everybody's nerves and get under their skin and just throw everyone to the boards and tire them out but there's no consistency with the lines anymore and where guys are going and you know you're seeing max domi go from first line center to He's playing on the fourth line. You have guys like Eric Robinson who are getting less than nine minutes of ice time in a game when he is just like the kid. I don't think anyone on the on the team gives more effort than he does every single game. But he's still getting eight, nine minutes of ice time. And you're giving ice time to guys like, you know, either Felino or Boone or Riley Nash who aren't doing much at all. So it, I, I don't know. I mean, Chad, you might see something different, but I, I get frustrated with seeing the constant changes that are going on all the time. Oh, sure. No, I, I mean, I, 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 I totally agree with you there. I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it plays, it plays with a guy's mind when you're constantly changing things up. Uh, I mean, it, it plays with the chemistry. It plays with the, you know, the communication between each other uh, when, when you're on the ice. Um I mean, it plays with conditioning. Uh, you know, if, if a guy like, Oh God, who was it the other night? I saw the line. I saw the line, uh, lengths, the line lengths the other night. Some, I mean, someone was on for like, like almost four minutes, (laughs) a shift the other night. It's it's escaping me. But anyway, yeah, the inconsistency, uh, if they can just figure out if Torts can kind of get his head out of his ass and, and just stick with a couple of lines, I think they're going to, stick with guys online. I think they're going to find better success to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, again, you know, we saw that with that, um, PLD bread and cam line and it's, mm-hmm. they stuck with them like the entire season. And that line did really well in the postseason mm-hmm. up, up against Tampa, but you're not, you're not keeping anybody together. You're not letting them get that bond that they need to have with their line mates to be able to know where they're at. You know, you look at some of these, some of these, big line mates that some of these guys have and you're sitting there thinking wow well they clearly know where each other are you know like you have Ovechkin and Crosby and stuff like that they're well they're on a line with guys consistently okay well these other guys like they know (laughs) they know where you're gonna be but you can't go out one line okay well I'm gonna be out with Cam and line a okay next shift you're gonna all right well now I'm out with Riley Nash and Boone Jenner okay well next line I'm out with Kevin Stenland and Emil Bimstrom. Like it, it makes no sense. And yeah, it, it messes with your head when you're Max Domi, who's getting tanked in ice time because Torch doesn't know how to make up his mind and stay consistent with anything. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I totally agree. <laughs> I don't know. Um, There's, I, have, I have nothing to elaborate on that because I totally <laughs> agree with that point. Um, if, if so, okay. So along those lines with Torts, if he is either, well, all right, we won't talk about firing because that would just be an interim coach and that would probably be for the rest of the year. If he doesn't come back after the season, who do you think and or want them to look at as a potential candidate for our head coach? 
Claude Julien. <laughs> oh, love it. Love that. <laughs> I, I mean, if you're gonna, I mean, if you're gonna, I mean, if you, if, if yeah, God, I, I would have to look into that a little bit more. I mean, I know I definitely don't want Mike Babcock with this team. No, that's for sure. Like, uh, Mike Commodore would go nuts over that. <laughs> oh man, that would be beautiful if Mike Commodore was given the chance to just roast Babcock. That'd be so I mean, great. Yeah, like honestly, people dog Claude Julian, but if he gave gave us a cup, cool, bring him in. You know, I yeah. I know Gerard Gallant's available. That'd be his second stint with us, and that's the one thing people are like. Oh, he's been with us already, but that was so long ago. And right. look at what he did with Vegas in year one. Now, granted. Mm-hmm. They kind of got handed the the silver platter a little bit with be, getting the expansion draft done the proper way, um, um, the way it I'm, should be done. Unlike, unlike you guys, where you're you might as well not even should even have an expansion. Dude, we got shafted. They're like, all right, here's a bunch of draft picks. Okay, <laughs> that's a, that's not really an expansion draft. Thanks, but, guys. All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. That, that's I mean, exciting. You let us get <laughs> it. Just. I, I do. I don't know. That was I mean, irritating. Is, is, is Peter Laviolette uh, available? I mean, maybe. I was just going to say that. Good. Go get Pierre, <laughs> go get Laviolette or uh, maybe, maybe talk Winnipeg and give me you Paul Maurice. Like, why not? <laughs> you took line. A, why don't you just go get Maurice? Yeah. Trade, <laughs> trade, Mar- tor- trade Maurice yeah. for st- <laughs> <laughs> Maurice for torch straight up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll even oh. buy you the plane ticket to get him out of here. <laughs> oh, it seems like, you know, we've got, uh, Blue Jackets uh, 2.0 in Florida with the Panthers. Mine's will just make G- Blue Jackets 2.1 up in Winnipeg. God. Why not? Are, are, are they, guys, are they the best team that nobody's talking about? Yes. Yeah. Hands down. <laughs> and it's I mean, infuriating to see <laughs> Winberg getting, he's got five or six goals and he got like, five goals with the blue jackets in the previous like 162 games. Yeah. Oh, and we're God. like 20 games in and he's got five or six. That is just stupid. And it is so frustrating. But again, I am loving seeing Chris Dreiger do better than Bobrovsky. That mm-hmm. makes it all better. Makes me tingly <sighs> inside. I miss, I miss Q. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, not all in on Jeremy Carlton still, but I get, I'll give him more credit for this, how good this season's been, but it's a lot of, we got the right pieces to do it. And we got the core finally bought into the system, but I still feel like JC is still not where it's, it's a weird situation for Blackhawks fans with Jeremy Carlton. Cause the fact that you go from Q to this unproven kid who mostly coached Rockford and yeah. let's say his first season with the Blackhawks too. Why go so well last year? Yeah. Yeah. Last year on the technicality of an expanded playoff, we really we got hot at the right time against Edmonton. But let's be honest, we were the twenty third team to get into the playoffs. It's kind <laughs> yeah. of like so. I would have to. I really would need to see a full season of Jeremy Colton because this half season, I it makes me feel good about him. But I'm not still not one hundred percent on Jeremy Colton. We like I need a full full October to. May or whatever it is for the, I need a, I need that kind of a season with Jeremy Colton, not this half season or he comes in at the back end of Q's season where he had like he was there for like what nineteen games and he got fired. But yeah, well, and you got to look at the at the fact that he didn't have a uh, training, he didn't have a real training camp to get to know the guys and get to develop what he really wants. Uh, last year he did before well, the season got paused. Well, I'm talking this season. Well, this no. season, yes. Well, well, no one really did, but I'm just saying. With it's Chad knows it's 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 a we're in a weird place with Jeremy Colton. It's like you want to be happy for him, but at the same time, you still don't. You haven't seen a regular full season with Jeremy Colton, so you don't know how invested you are in this guy yet. We yeah, when you talk about Q. I mean, come yeah. on, it's sure. well, we're kind of in the same type of situation with Torch. It's like you want to like him because he brought the success that we've had since 2014 of, okay, we had four straight playoffs and stuff like that. But then it's like, 
piss off, dude. Now you're like, we're not doing anything at this point. We're, you know, we're, hey, we're making the playoffs. Cool. And then we're losing the first round. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Torts, is, Torts is an Ohio guy. Like, you know, he's like a blue collar type of, yeah. you know, middle class working kind of guy. You know, Colleton is totally Chicago. <laughs> like oh, he's, yeah. he's yeah. very well dressed, very kind of, kind of flashy, like preppy, but like, you know, soft, soft spoken, you know, he's yeah. not, he's not, not a lot of emotion, stuff like that. You really, you'll really see JC get really mad for most, for the most part. No. Unless it's like, it, you have to get him kind of upset, but like, like, what are your thoughts overall with just both coaches on these teams, like overall and like, just the their style of running their respective teams. You are you talking to me or are you talking to? <laughs> oh, you uh, you Chad. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries. No worries. Um, I had a thought uh, with Colleton. Yeah, I, I mean he's he's got to prove that he's not a flash in a pan. I mean, because right now I, I really think that they're this team is kind of winning in, in spite of his coaching. Yeah. I mean, I know that I know he I know he comes. I I know they're obviously running his system, but I don't think he really. It just doesn't seem feel like he. I, I don't know. It just doesn't feel. It, it is his system, as weird as it may sound. It just doesn't feel like he has his stamp on this team. You know what I mean? Like 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 it's. Like it just, it just, it kind of feels like Patrick Kane and like when Taze was here, like they're still, they're still running the show. <laughs> you, you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah, because it seems like the system that he wants to run doesn't fit with the guys we have on this team. And if you right. listen to like Madhouse Chicago podcast or, you know, any other Chicago podcast, they tell you, it seems like the, we know what the system that Jeremy wants to run but we don't have the necessary personnel to make that system run for whatever reason. Jeremy doesn't want to adjust to the guys we have because he wants to really beat into the system. And it's like, some nights you'll see it and some nights you don't. Yeah. It's like you said, he doesn't, it's not like his, it, we, we know what Q system was. Right. Jeremy is, right. it's like, you see what he's trying to do, mm-hmm. but you also see it's like, yeah, this system's not working for whatever reason. He just doesn't want to adjust to the guys we have. Yeah. It's just crazy to think that you would think you would kind of like have your system, but try to weave it away to where it fits who you have. Yeah. yeah and it was, you know, and on the other side with torts, I mean, you know what, you know what you're getting when, when you get bring torts in, <clears throat> you're, you're getting a guy who just wants you to give everything, you know, and you, you, and, and like I said, hardworking blue collar, but it just seems like this year that he's, you know, with the inconsistency that we touched on earlier, Alex, it's uh it just seems like he's overthinking it this year. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, we don't have enough of a season to be, all right, well, I'm going to try this and try this. Like this is not a year for a chemistry experiment. It, this is a year no. for, okay. And we're going to try this. All right, cool. It works. Keep it. I, I mean, I can't, I can't handle the torts blender much longer. It's, <laughs> it's man, it is infuriating to it's, see. And then it's like, you you have guys that should be playing that don't like probably my my favorite player on their roster is Kevin Stenlin. The kid mm-hmm. is such a smooth skater, has a great shot. You know, granted, he's a young kid. He has he has stuff he has needs to work on, but he constantly gets shafted, was always getting sent down. And luckily with Miko Koivu retiring, you know, he's had his opportunity to make an impact and stay up on the lineup. Um and First off, I mean, he also has a beautiful head of hair, but that <laughs> oh, aside, that's slow. that lettuce, that is it, Fre- fresh, freshly cut lettuce that you just would love to have in a salad. It's just that nice. <laughs> yeah, of course. Nice romaine. Um, <laughs> see what you did there. Not, so, not an iceberg. No one, no one wants an iceberg in, in this house. No, all no. about the romaine. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Iceberg for losers like Penguins fans. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's one of those things you have guys like that who I, and this is my pure opinion is you deserve to be in the lineup, but they're not. And then you have guys like Grigorenko who, dude, he he couldn't freaking hit water if he fell out of a boat right now. I mean, the, the dude sucks. Granted, you know, he was a first round pick and then he went over to the KHL, but 
I'm glad they only signed him to do a one year deal. I want him gone. I, I want him out. Um, it's insane. And then, you know, they need to make a move. They need to find something because whatever is going on is not working. You need to find that. Like we talked about, you need to find that number one center, but their biggest problem is their salary cap issue right now because Felino's contract is up. I love Felino, probably my favorite captain that we've ever had, but dude, for your little bit of production, you cannot sign another $6 million deal. That is just, that can't happen. That, I'm sorry, that's too high. And then same with Savard. He's doing nothing. He hasn't scored since game two of the 2019 playoffs against Tampa. <laughs> I mean, he's gotten some assists here and there. Now he's also gotten 4,827 block shots, but he's gotten no goals, very few points. And his, he's got like a over, a, I think, a $5 million or $4 million contract hit or cap hit. It's crazy, you know, and then you have our best guy, Delzato, with one of the lowest cap hits on the team. It's crazy. Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, if, if, we get, if we got into goals for the Blue Jackets in the offseason, re-signing Delzato is towards the top of that for me, and then re-signing Line A. Because the thing is, with Line A, people are like, oh, he's, he's going to walk after the year. People don't understand this. He's a restricted free agent. He can't walk. He just can't. That's not how it works. Yeah. He, he, well, he doesn't have the ability to do that. Now, he has arbitration rights. So if he doesn't like the contract, he can go into arbitration, fine. And I've seen arbitration. There's He'll probably make about $9 million. I am absolutely willing to pay that at this point. We haven't, we've never had a guy that is as a, much of a dynamic player as he is. Dude, pay him $10 million for eight years. I don't even care. Do it. Yeah. He's going to give you 40, 50 goals a year. Absolutely. Why, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. yeah. And another, another thing that you have going for him is, is I mean, he's got a relationship with Yarmo. I mean, these Finnish yeah. players know each other and they know each other well. So yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the only thing left is, <laughs> and the reason why people want to leave big names apparently want to leave Columbus is because of oh, the city for some whatever reason, <laughs> they just don't like the city, but yeah. uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll bunk up with Jack and, and Jack will just show him a good time in the off season. And be like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go five for 50, five years, 50 mil. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I, there you hey, go. I'd be game. So, so talking about guys that um, contracts are expiring, I want to get your thoughts. Their contracts are both up at the same time. Pick a goalie that we have to keep because there is Anybody that's logical knows that we cannot afford both of those goalies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, would you rather have Corpy or would you rather have Elvis? Uh, based on what I've seen over the last two years, I'd rather have Elvis. Uh, I, I, I would much rather have Elvis. I mean, and, and it's nothing against Corpy, but I mean, he's just, he's just always, he's always had to fight. I respect Corpy. I mean, you know, I've talked about this in, you know, my Blue Jackets interviews before. Uh, Corpus Allo, he's just, he has, he's, he's always had to fight. He, even in, you know, he sat, he sat behind Bobrovsky for those, you know, the last couple of years, he wasn't even a number one goalie in Cleveland when he was with the monsters. Yeah. And it, you know, I, over these last few games, it just goes to show you why. Uh, and Elvis kind of just has that look of a number one goalie. He makes, He's been making number one goalie saves. Uh, he's younger, and I think he has more long-term potential. That's just my opinion, though. Yeah, I, I see. Uh, I'm the same way. You know, granted, between the two, Elvis is going to carry a, a higher hit. I know this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think what would end up happening is I could see Corpy being, you know, if they need it to be done, I could see Corpy being a trade piece to, like, a team like Edmonton or mm – -hmm. Ottawa or something, you know, like Edmonton is make makes the most sense right now because they need a, a, a good goalie and Corpy's only what 26. So, or yeah. 25, 26. So it's, it's one of those things like, yes, I agree. I, I personally don't think he is a starting goalie and he shows, you know, he has a couple of games and some really big saves, but mm -hmm. over time that, you know, he, he stays consistent but then he slowly starts going down and declining a little bit. And then it, you can just see the frustration in him. Elvis, 
you know, granted, he, I think he holds too much or too many of the mistakes on his own shoulders. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I kind of want a goalie that does that because he's like, hey, I screwed up. I'm going to fix that. All right, cool. Instead of, oh, it's the defense's fault. It's the defense's yeah. fault. No, it, it's the forward's fault. No, yeah. dude, like goalies are going to make mistakes too. But yeah, I think Elvis, aside from the whole marketing thing of having a goalie whose name is Elvis, um, I, I think having him would be a huge thing for this city. Like the, the guy is getting the Columbus skyline on his pads. Yeah. That is sick. I mean, yeah. granted, we're terrible right now, but that, that's one of those things you want in a goal. You want a goalie who, or really any player, but between the two, he is taking in Columbus. Like I, I would much rather have him. And then, you know, we've seen the little bit of Matisse Kivlenics. The kid looks really good. And then that's fine. We will hold 66% of the Latvian players specifically in our two goalies. That's it. <laughs> Elvis is Elvis is the kind of guy that makes mistakes and goes home and flogs himself for every mistake he made. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I let and, my team down. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think with that, that, you know, the, the big downside with that is he could, if he has a couple of bad games in a row, he needs to kick his own ass to be able to get out of that funk of whatever would end up happening. But that's when the backup goalie would come in, you know, it's, yeah. Look at Elvis' starts last year. He starts game one, gets shelled by the Penguins, seven to two. Like, and then he just goes and he plays a bunch of terrible games. Okay, well, guess what? The second that we needed to legitimately rely on him, the kid goes bananas. You know, we sit there and beat uh, the Panthers on uh, New Year's Eve, and then he gets his five shutouts and eight games, and it's, I mean, it's crazy. It's, yeah. I'm looking forward to the future with him. I'll never forget. I mean, you just saw the confidence, even in Cleveland. Uh, you know, the one game he, they sent him up to Cleveland for the Monsters for conditioning or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we started talking to him. He goes, <clears throat> he goes, <laughs> literally, exact quote: "I didn't come to America to play in the minors." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the kid is just he just beams with confidence, and that's the one yeah. thing I think you you have to have that in a good goalie. Um, I mean, granted. And the that last half of the year where the Blues went on and they won the cup with Bennington, yeah, he had a ton of confidence. But then he started to show his true self this yeah. past season. Like, oh, okay, well, maybe you're not the god among men that everyone thought you were. But, I mean, he's still good, don't get me wrong. Um, but you want goalies that do that. Look at Flurry and Robin Leonard and, um, I mean, Matt Murray a couple years ago, like Penguins, Stanley Cup, Matt Murray. Um, Harry Price, even though he had one cup, it's one of those things that you know you want a goalie. Goalies are psycho demons that you want them to have a, enough of a personality that they're confident between the net. Yeah, goalies are definitely a special breed. That's for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a bunch of idiots about making out with the post and. I don't well no I mean Kevin Lincoln no he his confidence is so great to watch and he's just like I came here to be the number one goalie in Chicago I'm gonna I'm gonna back it up and he's basically done that and he's so calm like he's the most anti psycho goalie he's just so chill it's like all right this this kid's ready to go he's like not taking <laughs> taking no prisoners right now in Chicago he's like no this is my job yeah and he's well, proven it so to be fair his competition is Malcolm Subban. Uh, hey, that is the, you know, that's the guy who just shut your team out. So I don't think you should have. Yeah, you shut crap. out. Uh, you shut hey. out the Blue Jackets. You didn't shut out hey. the Lightning. You shut out the Blue Jackets. Hey, hey, even the sun shines on a dog's ass every now and then. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Very too shit. I mean, I mean, yeah. let's be honest. I'm not. I Malcolm. I think Malcolm's okay. Am I? Am I saying that he's there? Are going to be our nice backup for the next few years? Kind of doubt it since Matt Tompkins is now a goal as the new backup since Colin Delia is now in Rockford. So I mean, have fun with that. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Yeah. Dude, I like I like Colin. It's just he's too um aggressive for his own good. So I don't know. It'll be interesting what Matt Tompkins does as our new taxi taxi squad goalie. So I don't know. It's gonna be interesting, but Chad, man, thank you so much for coming on, you know, just jumping on with us tonight, talking jackets, 
Blackhawks, multiple other sports just because, and, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much for taking the time and just joining us tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me on guys. I'll come back on anytime. Oh, for no, definitely for sure. So where can people find you and the garage beers? Because if you guys aren't listening to the garage beers podcast, I really don't know what you're doing with your lives because it is <laughs> fantastic primo stuff. You know, you know, as a kid from Northeast Ohio, I mean, no, there's nothing better than listening to a good podcast that actually wants to talk about our teams in a good limelight, unlike 92.3, the uh. fan and stuff like that. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> find them right Chad here. Knows. Chad knows. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, anyway, find us on Twitter, all our social media is at the garage beers. Uh, you can follow, you know, on TikTok, I, on Instagram, on, there's so many other stuff. Uh, we're going to start our own Twitch channel here soon so we can live Ooh. broadcast our, uh, our podcast, uh, there you go at the garage beers. Uh, you know, we, we, we kind of formatted it all, all our social medias, you know, follow me at garage beers, Chad, garage beers, Mike, garage beers, Joe. Uh, we got some good stuff, uh, uh coming up here. Uh, you know, we can, uh, prom- promote a guest. He's either coming on this week or next week. I can't remember which, but, uh, uh, Indians field reporter Andre Knott is going to be joining us. Here, oh, uh, let's uh, go! Coming, coming up let's soon. Go! So, uh, oh, you got you got Andre coming up, dude. That's what's yeah, happening. yeah. Andre yeah. Knott's going to be joining us. So uh, stay tuned for that. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I would I would recommend uh, if I actually had Nick Gambone come on my other podcast of oh, back, I think like after the season ended. Uh, Nick was a really great guy to talk to. Um, mm-hmm. Try to get him on at some point too because talk he does a lot of like. He does all the um he leads like yeah. the production group, like all the graphics and all the stuff on the socials and the videos. Definitely yeah. hit him up if you guys haven't had a chance yet. He was a great talk. He had a lot, he had a lot of good stories, uh, yeah. especially okay. with guys like Gian, like you know, J, uh, Giambi and a bunch of other guys. It's he's he's a good talk, but to get Andre on, oh yeah. I'm ex- I'm excited for that. Too bad, uh, too bad mustard can't be there to give uh, Andre a little <laughs> yeah. uh, give him a little. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I actually know Gambone personally. I will uh, I will. Yeah, oh, he, nice. He, he, you're right. He's definitely uh, he's definitely one to come on because I uh, yeah. I'm sure he does have some stories. Oh, he does. Yeah, no, Nick. Yeah, Nick's a great guy. I was glad to get him mm-hmm. on, but yeah, that's definitely a good dude to talk about. But yeah, yeah, like I said, guys, if you haven't given a follow or listen to garage beers do so because they have a lot, a lot of good Northeast Ohio talk and the beer selections. You guys, if you listen to the beer selections, these guys have, you will be a beer aficionado within a, a few weeks. Trust me. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. Especially Mike. Mike is a, Mike is a snob. He, he's easy. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, easy. Sure. Uh, um, yeah. So you only get the finest hops from the middle of Massachusetts. <laughs> so you can only, you can only see it there, and my my it was hand brewed by by uh, yeah. He's just he, yeah yeah the well, guy that'll yeah, go well. out on his anniversary date. No, it's a hand brewed IPA. <laughs> it's it's got more fl- it's got more it's got the hazelnut f- and, uh, finish with more right. hops and the and like you me and like Alex here we're just sitting here with like our IPAs or our normal like domestics. The, we're like all right, that's cute. Yeah, the yeah. hops yeah. are yeah. organic. No, dude, yeah. I'll sit here with my Miller Light. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah or, yeah. or, or yeah. I'll uh, or for my uh, German buddies, I'll grab go grab a Kolsch. And just drink yeah. some of that and just have some nice fine German beer and be like, all right, have fun with that, I guess. With Dude, American I'm Irish and Scottish. So I'll literally drink anything alcohol. I don't yeah. Care. Yeah, it's it's a, a, yeah, it's German, a, it's yeah. German, Irish, and Scottish over here. Give me a beer. I'm drinking that thing easily like that. Let's go. It's, it's, yeah. a, monk, it's, a, it's a monkfish. It's a monkfish chocolate cinnamon stout. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Age twenty years in a in a <laughs> bourbon barrel because <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh man! All right, Alex, let the people know where they can find us on the. Oh social. my goodness! You can find me on Twitter at a nuddle underscore cbj. You can find Zach, that guy right there, at cle Zach. You can find us also at Cannons and Tomahawks Podcast on Twitter at Cannon Hawks Pod. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on YouTube as well. Big surprise here, Cans and Tomahawks podcast on both of those. Same name for everything. Also, you go check out our awesome sponsors, Pure Hockey and Spy Optic. I mean, what are you doing? If you're not going buying stuff from there, you suck. I mean, yeah. blatantly, let's <laughs> we, be you're, real. You're an, you're an yeah. idiot. You don't yeah. buy stuff from there. You're just Gosh. an idiot, okay? <laughs> and if you're not Gosh. following Billy Up Sports, you're also an idiot. <laughs> 
All right. Yeah. And if you're not following belly up hockey, you're also an idiot. Okay. And if you go and you're not following the belly up podcast network, like, dude, you suck. Okay. Yeah. Like just, (laughs) just whatever. I mean, I don't understand. You need to go follow these people go follow Chad and garage beers podcast guys. Okay. Quit being an idiot and follow. Yeah. Don't be an idiot. Okay. (laughs) And if you can get us, the Kansas and Tomahawks podcast up to a thousand followers, we're going to have some super cool news, uh, but we're not going to tell you until then. So (laughs) we only need about 600 and something followers to do that. So get on that. Yeah. Ridiculous. I know. But yeah, Chad, man, thank you once again to just jump on this crazy train. That is this podcast. It's been, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I think I haven't laughed this hard in a, in a few episodes. So this has definitely been a good time. Thank you so much. Like I said, so to we? just jump on here for last couple hours and just shooting the shit with us and just having a good time, man. It's, yeah. This has been great. Yeah, it's been fun, buddy. Absolutely guys. Anytime. All right. See you later, Mary. And later. until next time, guys, we will see you here at the Kansas Tomahawks podcast where it's all about beer, food, and hockey.